mpenzi mtazamaji for yet another opportunity ya kuweza kusikia ushuhuda ambao utakujenga sana na kuinua hata na imani yako. Na kwa nini nasema hivyo? Nasema hivyo kwa sababu mgeni ambaye awamu hii niko naye ataweza kukuelezea maisha yake vile ambavyo yamekuwa katika Kristo Yesu hata vile ambavyo aliweza kujuana na Yesu. And I'm telling you he got born again in a very dramatic way. And then what followed now ni the manifestation of the power of God. And you see sometimes unapata watu wanauliza Mungu ambaye huwa tunasikia kwamba alitenda. Yuko wapi? And by the way, Ka Mete is my very good name. Nasema hivyo kwa sababu niko na mtumishi wa Mungu Askofu Getao kutoka huduma ya New Life Covenant Church. And he got born again katika mwaka moja mia tisa sabini na tisa, 1979 where were you na ilikuwa ni tarehe 31 December saa sita usiku and you know what he was doing wakati ambapo alikutana na Kristo he was drinking i mean i mean hai hai mtumishi wa Mungu yes here we are and we thank the lord for this wonderful opportunity kwa sababu ni vizuri sana wakati ambapo tunasikia miaka ile ya nyuma injili ilivyokuwa vile ambavyo imekuwa na vile ambavyo iko sasa that you got born again back in the year 1979 31 December 12 midnight in a very dramatic way do we begin from there yes please amazing <clears throat> thank you my listeners ladies and gentlemen wherever you are I want to tell you the reality of Jesus Christ as I met him. He appeared to me in a very real way. Mm-hmm. Undeniable visitation. Mm-hmm. I was drinking with my friends to pass over the year Kuruka Mwaka. Yes. On that 1st December 1979 in a bar in a place called Nyahururu. Ah, Nyahururu. And as we were drinking, Dio. at exactly 12 midnight, uh, before we shouted the new year in, I was struck on my head. I used to have long curly hair. Uh-huh. And I was struck on the head by a very cold shower like rain and it passed through uh, my head the neck i felt it moving up to the toe and left i thought i had been struck by stroke yes because i understand a bit of medicine mm-hmm. and i told my friends dear friends i'm paying my bills i'm clearing all my bills I'm living right now and this is my last time to be in this bar mm-hmm. for I will never drink again. Yes. I'm either going to die or leave because I have been touched in a serious way and I feel like if it is not stroke then it is the touch of Jesus oh, and I'll live again. Them. Yeah. Okay. And you were high already. I was already drunk. Yeah. If it is not Jesus, then I'll be dead. But if it's Jesus, I'll be alive tomorrow. So I paid my bills and left the bar. When I went to home, I knelt down for the first time I had never prayed and never gone to church I I pray I knelt down by my bedside and said God I felt a touch if it is Jesus I plead that you save me and if it is not Jesus if I'm dying tonight forgive all my sins 
and let me come to heaven, not to hell. I was married with uh, four children. Ah, okay. And mm -hmm. so you prayed. Then I prayed and I slept. The following morning, I lit a cigarette. I used to be a, a chain smoker because mm -hmm. I'm a professional accountant. So I used to smoke quite a lot. And I lit my cigarette in the morning when I woke up. And a voice spoke to me, said, Where? Tiga konyua zoom on shio. Nedira koho no kirie ira nenye gai. A voice. Wacha kunyua hiyo sumu. Yes. Nilikuoko wa jana. Yes. Ni mimi mungu. Nenye gai wako. An audible voice? Yeah, an audible voice. Spoke to me as if Somebody was speaking behind me. And I threw out away the cigarette and the lighter, which was a, a touch lighter. And I, 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 I knelt again. I said, thank you. I will never drink again. I will never smoke again. I will never walk around the streets at night looking for strange people. God, I think. And I got born again. That was on a Wednesday. Wow. When it was one, uh, you know, in the morning, I visited my cousin who lived an, in another estate. And as we were sitting down and sharing, he offered a cigarette. I told him, my, my cousin, I am not smoking. He laughed and asked me, did you get born again? Yes, I got born again last night. I'll never smoke again. He laughed. On Saturday morning, he passed by my house and took me to his church, the Presbyterian Church mm -hmm. of East Africa. PCEA. PCEA. Yes. And we went to church. The service went on. I don't know what they preached or what what it was, just a little, a little infant. Yeah. After the service, he told me to accompany him to visit a man who was sick. We visited him in the house, the wife and the, lady, the, the, the work lady carried the man to the sitting room and they laid him on a seat and my cousin told him, I have brought this cousin of mine to say hello to you because he got born again on 1st of January. Mm -hmm. What? The man rose up. His abdomen had recoiled and stopped passing anything. So he was waiting for an ambulance to go to Kenyatta Hospital. Wow. And as the, so, when he heard that I, I was born again, he rose up and said, pray for me, I'll get healed. I told him, I don't know how to pray. <whistles> Say anything to that God who removed you from alcoholism. I asked them, then uh, bring a Bible. They brought the Bible, they thought I would read, I never knew anything about the Bible. And so I, we did read the Bible. I just put it on his head and said, in the name of God of this Bible, I command your intestines that are blocked to open. And I left the house after we took tea, went on our usual work, and Monday, on Tuesday, I had somebody grab me behind say, Mohuja, preacher man, mm. stand. I stopped, he said, come, let us go to your office. We went to my office and he told me, keep on serving that God, he is real. You had not reached the gate of my house before I ran to the loo to empty my stomach that had Jesus. been blocked for one week. So, serve him. 
And I, I got interested. The man you had prayed for? Yes. His intestines got opened. And he went to the loo and didn't go to Kenyatta for surgery. That's and all you said was the God of this Bible. Yes, I didn't know about Jesus. I never knew about the name of Jesus. Never knew anything. But I knew the God of the Bible. He opened his stomach. Hallelujah. And then life continued. Yeah. I, I joined a fellowship of uh, people who used to meet outside the DC's place under Act 3. They, they were not actually Christians. They were discussing general things. I went there and they began testifying how God is real, how he had saved me. And many of them believed. So they didn't get saved. They said, please pray for that God who has removed you from alcohol. So we went on and on like that until I was transferred to another district where I used to drink and fall in ditches. Yeah. I was transferred from Nyandarwa to Kakamega where I had drunk and fallen in ditches many times until a girl who used to go from to, to, to sell milk for her father, because her father was a farmer, mm. picked me from the drain one day after I had fallen and pulled me out because I would have died that day. Mm -hmm. And the girl pulled me, I was drunk, and she left me there. Mm -hmm. So another day I drank and fell in another, another ditch, the same girl, and the father me and said, you, wa mwoto mwesebe, waya mwoto mwikiku yu na kulanga tu pombe. Bibi, si, wanu, sita kubeba leo. Kwenda uko. She left, and after she had sold the milk, a voice spoke to her, go back and remove that man from the drain. He will die today if you don't remove him. So she obeyed the voice of God, came back, dragged me out. And that time she didn't leave me in the brain. She took me up to the door of my house. Mm -hmm. So that was another episode. And uh, people in the office told me, Mr. Vitao, this alcohol, Changa will kill you. It kills many people from your district mm -hmm. because they don't know how to eat they drink it hungry mm -hmm. so i i listened to them what do i do he be eating how can i eat and i don't know how to cook they advised me to employ a cook mm -hmm. i did it i had the money yeah i did it and the man that came to cook for me happened to be the uncle of the girl who picked me from the drain. So, as he continued cooking for me, I asked him to get somebody to give us milk. We can pay at the end of the month. He told his sister, uh, my boss wants milk. Can we be carrying? Yes. Can uh, the daughters be bringing in the evening? Yes. Who brought the milk? The lady that removed me from the drain with her sister, a younger sister, and her cousin. Three girls. They brought the first day, and the second day, I called them. I called the three of them behind before they left the house. After. Who among you? will marry me. Uh -huh. The younger sister, I asked her, will you marry me? No, she left the house. They cast their cousin. I asked her, eh, will you marry me? She left the house. <clears throat> the last one was the one, the girl of the dream. I asked her, will you marry me? She laughed and said, Yes, if you stop 
ugly. So I had to pretend to have stopped drinking. I married her. And she's your wife today? She's my wife today. She's around. She's here. Which year was that? 1973. Yeah. So, so that was way before you met Christ. Yes. Yes. And we began to live well. And we have lived together for the last 49 years. If I was to marry again, I would still marry her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I began preaching. Was transferred from Kakamega uh, in the rural area to town. And in town, I began preaching, and people began to come to church. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I was preaching, but people were coming, because they were seeing signs and wonders. I preached for seven months, until one day I went to preach in a high school, and the miracles happened. The girls were filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't know what was happening. As they rolled on the ground and they spoke in tongues, I said, I began to pray. I didn't know what it was. So you preach. Yes. The power of God comes down. Yes. And you don't know what is going on. I don't know what it is. Later on, I was told it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so and a man, told you? there was a man who saw me preach. He said, come. We went his home and he said I want to be your teacher I'll teach you the ah, word of God uh -huh. he taught me the word I stopped preaching uh, as a pastor that I had become in my infancy mm -hmm. and I sat down under him for seven years training After training for seven years under his feet and we went to that school, in form of school, uh, five times in a week. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday morning, Sunday evening. Five times a week we would meet in his house. And after that, I began preaching yes. uh, to born again Christians and people are born again and yeah. miracles yeah. of healing mm -hmm. were happening. Now with understanding. With understanding. Yes. After training. One day, I, wo I, I preached in our church and uh, I said, it doesn't matter what disease comes to you or visit you. Even if a person dies, you can take the dead body to Jesus. Through his servants, he will raise the dead. So one day, in 1983, a boy died in the house. He was called Steve. The boy? Yeah, a neighbor. A neighbor's boy died. He was about five years old. And after he died, the, the body was given back to the mother from hospital. Mm. She was a woman of faith. And she told her husband, on Sunday, last Sunday, our pastor said, you can take a dead man or woman or child to a man of God. So at 2 a.m., I knocked on the door and I heard a voice saying, Mama Jeroge, Mama Jeroge. Yes, she opened the door and left me sleeping. When she opened, she found a, bo a boy carried on her back and... Dead. Dead. She was told by my wife, put him on this seat. The owner, the one who told you to bring dead bodies, sits here. Mweke hapa. And the same attackiona leo. She came to the bedroom back and 
opened me up from blankets and said, oh, Kira, wake up. I'm you told people to bring dead bodies. Steve is dead. Wake up. I woke up dressed and went and my, the mother said, Pasa, I don't want to sing Mungu Yumwema Kwa Matanga. I want to sing Mungu Yumwema Kwa Ufufuo. Wow. So I got faith. I prayed. That time I had learned to pray. I prayed a, a short prayer and called Stephen back. I, Knocked his head down, down, down. Steve, 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 Steve. Nothing happened. And then I told the mother. He was already cold and dead. Dunned. And then I told the mother, it's not enough. Go out there, turn him upside, beat his do uh, buttocks, and he will come back. I did that so that they could leave my house. <laughs> but God is faithful. <laughs> God is faithful. The woman, she turned the boy body up once and said, Steve, Steve. He got shaken. Jesus. And was brought back. I said, Atahara na Atatabika. Come tomorrow morning and don't tell anybody. I told there was no even excitement and celebration Nazi. and don't tell anybody. And shouting and woo. Eh. Alienda, Sibuya Kamuleta, Kashikuru Mungu. And I told her, don't tell anybody. But in the following day, everybody had known Yakwamba Steve Akohai. So, last time I spoke to Steve, alikuwa naoa. Yeah, he was getting married. That was the first miracle of resurrection. In short, I have seen many people come back to life. My own son fell from a tree and died. He's a mechanic. The mother, who had just received faith from God, for seeing what God was doing, uh, put him in bed and covered him and waited for me. He fell at 4, 4 p.m. and I arrived at uh, 5.30. And I asked her, how are you, mom? Nico Poa. She gave me tea to drink. And after taking tea, she said, but there was only a a small accident. Ben Ali Panda I Muti Pale Ju Akangucha headlong, Akagongo Akichua, Ako Hapa Kwakitanda, Ako Aji, Koenda Komu and Kava, Alienda Kitabo. Nakwani Hukum Pereka Hospital. Mm -hmm, that's what I wanted to ask. Apana, Sikuona Haja, you are Jesus. Is stronger than doctor. Call him. Muite. Si Steve wali ya muka. Ata benata wa muka. He. Si kukula. Ilipika magoti next to his bed. I called the name of God. Jesus Christ. Rebuked the spirit of death. Released life. Kufika satano. Ata ye mama na watoto wake haa kukula. Satana usiku tena. Satana usiku tena. kaenda kulala. Lakini, I slept next to him. Ni kaweka mkono wangu on his body. Kasema, God, as you release the anointing on me, it will touch the And I slept. So. Were you not feeling the urgency of taking him to hospital? No. Nilijua tamuka. Faith. Faith. At 3, uh, no, 2 a.m. in Kalala. Throughout the night, it was Jalala. 2 a.m., I was caught up in sleep in Kalala. At 
wakati watoto wanaamuka kwenda shule nilisikia my daughter called Jerry akiambia Bena we msema we hiyo mchezo nasema fanyanga ya kupanda kila muti kama nyani uache unajua likufanga jana <laughs> ulikufanga nika nika nikaamuka yeah. nikaambia mama asiende shule nimpeleke hospitali kwani kama kuna injury he had no injury he woke up he is alive next week tutarudi hapa na mtumishi wa Mungu atueleze mambo mengine mengi ambayo ameweza kukutana nayo katika huduma yake kwa sababu pia ni mwandishi wa vitabu ukiangalia vizuri hapo tunakuwa kuna vitabu vingi sana atakuwa anatuambia pia also the inspiration behind writing those books and i'm telling you <laughs> i thank the lord wakati ambapo nazungumza naye amenikumbusha makala ya uhalisia ambayo tulifanya na mtumishi wa Mungu Bishop Mambo Leo na ukisikia kile ambacho anatueleza na ukisikia vile ambavyo Bishop Mambo Leo alikuwa anatuambia miujizi ya Mungu ilikuwa inafanyika katika ile miaka surely god is still at work committee is my name tukutane next sunday na kesho ndani ya raushwa kwa heri